Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Bush. Welcome to the White House, and I salute the Vice President, Mrs. Quayle, and Secretary Cheney, other members of our cabinet, and General Vono, and distinguished members of Congress who are with us today, and uh, former Congressman Joe Diagardi. I'm especially glad uh, Joe's with us here today. To the former Medal of Honor re recipients, I salute each and every one of you. Uh, to Georgina Palmer and Mary Bowens, the sisters of today's honoree, are with us. And don't they look lovely? We're just delighted. And the honorees, some note of more than trivial passing. Uh, the honoree's great grandnephew. Uh, Staff Sergeant Douglas Warren of the 101st Airborne, he returned, uh, he looks a little jet lagged to me, but he returned just last night from Saudi Arabia. And uh, I want to welcome you home. And we also, so to do equal time to the Air Force, why uh, we salute you, Mr. Stowers, also back here. He's at Langley. So it's a lovely day here, and we welcome each and every one of you to the White House. Um, we want to honor a true hero, a man who makes us proud of our heritage as Americans, a man who, in life and death, uh, helped keep America free. I speak of Corporal Freddy Stowers, to whom, posthumously, we present our highest military award for valor, the Medal of Honor. It's an award for bravery and conscience that compendium uh, we call character. Today, Corporal Freddie Stowers becomes the first black soldier honored with a Medal of Honor from World War I. He sought and helped achieve the triumph of, a, of right over wrong. He showed, as this year has proved again, that an inspired human heart can surmount bayonets and barbed wire. 73 years ago, the corporal first was recommended for a Medal of Honor, but his award was not acted upon. In 1987, then Congressman Joe Diogardi and uh, my friend, the late Mickey Leland, known to many here from Houston, discovered the Stowers case while conducting other research. And the Army took up the case. And last November, the secretaries of the Army and Defense recommended that Corporal Stowers receive the Medal of Honor. I heard his story, accepted their recommendation enthusiastically. It's been said that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge. On September 28, 1918, Corporal Freddie Stowers took, stood poised on the edge of such a challenge and summoned his medal and his courage. He and the men of Company C, 371st Infantry Regiment, began their attack on Hill 188 in the Champagne-Meuse sector of France. Only a few minutes after the fighting began, the enemy stopped firing, and enemy troops uh, climbed out uh, of their trenches onto the parapets of the trenches, held up their arms, and seemed to surrender. The relieved American forces held their fire, stepped out into the open. As our troops moved forward, the enemy jumped back into their trenches and sprayed our men with a vicious stream of machine gun and mortar fire. The assault annihilated well over 50% of Company C, and in the midst of this bloody chaos, Corporal Stars took charge and bravely led his men forward, destroying their foes. Although he was mortally wounded during the attack, Freddie Starris continued to press forward, urging his men on until he died. 
On that September day, Corporal Starrs was alone, far from family and home. He had to be scared. His friends died at his side. But he vanquished his fear and fought not for glory, but for a cause larger than himself, the cause of liberty. Today, as we pay tribute to this great soldier, our thoughts continue to be with the men and women of all our wars who valiantly carried the banner of freedom into battle. They, too, know America would not be the land of the free if it were not also the home of the brave. The soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen of Desert Storm, a group that includes uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Warren, all these valiant Americans are heirs to the legacy of Corporal Stowers and the men, men of Company C. No nation could be more proud of its sons and daughters than we are of them. Today, we celebrate their achievements, but we also heed these words echoing over the centuries. Only the dead have seen the end of war. We owe it to Freddie Stowers and those who revere his legacy to defend the principles for which he died and for which our great country stands. In that spirit, I am honored to welcome two of his sisters, uh, Georgina Palmer of Richmond, California, and Mary Bowens of Greenville, South Carolina. They will accept the award on behalf of their late brother, the text of which I will now uh, ask uh, Sergeant, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Major Byrne to read the citation. The President of the United States of America authorized by act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, awards in the name of the Congress, the Medal of Honor posthumously to Corporal Freddie Stowers, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Corporal Freddie Stowers distinguished himself by exceptional heroism on 28 September, 1918, while serving as a squad leader in Company C 371st Infantry Regiment, 93rd Infantry Division. His company was the lead company during the attack on Hill 188, Champagne-Marne Sector, France, during World War I. A few minutes after the attack began, the enemy ceased firing and began climbing up onto the parapets of the trenches, holding up their arms as if wishing to surrender. The enemy's actions caused the American forces to cease fire and to come out into the open. As the company started towards and when within about 100 meters of the trench line, the enemy jumped back into their trenches and greeted Corporal Stowers' company with interlocking bands of machine gun fire and mortar fire, causing well over 50% casualties. Faced with incredible enemy resistance, Corporal Stowers took charge, setting such a courageous example of personal bravery and leadership that he inspired his men to follow him in the attack. With extraordinary heroism and complete disregard of personal danger under devastating fire, he crawled forward, leading his company towards an enemy machine gun nest, which was causing heavy, heavy casualties to his company. After fierce fighting, the machine gun position was destroyed and the enemy soldiers were killed. Displaying great courage and intrepidity, Corporal Stowers continued to press the attack against a determined enemy. While crawling forward and urging his men to continue the attack on a second trench line, he was gravely wounded by machine gun fire. Although Corporal Stowers was mortally wounded, he pressed forward, urging on the members of his squad until he died. Inspired by the heroism and display of bravery of Corporal Stowers, his company continued the attack against incredible odds, contributing to the capture of Hill 188 and causing heavy enemy casualties. Corporal Stowers' conspicuous gallantry, extraordinary heroism, and supreme devotion to his men were well above and beyond the call of duty follow the finest traditions of military service, and reflect the utmost credit on him and the United States Army, signed George Bush. I think that concludes the service, but I'd like to ask the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, and General Vono and General Powell to come up and uh, thank our recipients, and maybe the other members of the Joint Chiefs would join us. I think it would be most appropriate.